All right, today we're going to look at the uh, Power Steltic pump 9090 NAC, and we're going to show you a little bit about how uh, to assemble and disassemble the pump head. Okay. Well, carrying on here with the uh, Peristaltic pump 9090 NAC uh, model, uh, we have a completed unit here, uh, all assembled. And what we want to do is just show you how if you have to remove the pump head and you want to switch things around a little bit, maybe you want to turn the pump head in a different direction depending on what your application is. Uh, it is assembled with uh, four of these three and a half inch bolts. You look on the back of the pump head and those bolts will pass through. It's a countersink here on the pump head. The bolts will pass through into this uh, flange on the motor and have the 3 8 uh, 16 uh, hex nuts uh, with a lock washer on there. And those have to be uh, loosened first before you can begin to remove these uh, bolts. Uh, there also is a set screw it looks like this here. It's a 5 16 18 set screw. It has uh, a full knob on the end here. So that, that is made to sit right down inside the keyway of the motor shaft. Uh, you'll use a 7 30 seconds uh, or 5 30 seconds uh, Allen wrench uh, that will go down inside here. Be able to uh, release the uh, set screw and then be able to pull the roller carrier off uh, which is this item here. And you can see where the set screw is recessed down inside. Uh, when you're when you're putting one of these together, the roller assembly with the uh, the spacers, uh, the bearings, and the races, uh, we also have options on here for two different settings. And what that is is if you're going to use a 3 8 ID tubing, you have to have uh, the rollers positioned in a certain way so that they have a tighter squeeze. Uh, they want to be the outermost uh, position. And if you're using the 5 8 tubing, you want to have the innermost uh, setting. So what we're going to do is the most common one is the, is the 5 8 uh, But basically, what we're going to do is put our spacers over those tap tapped holes, take our race in our bearing and the bearing will just drop drop inside like so. We run our our bolt down through there, set it right down over the spacer, and just by hand here we can get it started. And the same thing with the other one. We'll drop it in there, put the bolt down through, make sure that spacer is there. We'll hand tighten those. And that'll require a quarter inch Allen wrench. Uh, we use a T handle here, it gives you a little bit more leverage. And the best way to do this <clears throat> actually would be to, to put this in a vise and you can get a little more torque on it. And then those would just be able to freely spin around like so. Now, when, when this is being positioned inside the pump head and attached to the motor, we'll go back over here to the assembled unit. <coughs> there is a keyway, a slot right in the motor shaft there that when, when you slide this assembly on there, uh, the proper way to do that is to slide this unit back until it touches the back of the pump housing back in here and then slightly move it forward using your 730 seconds uh, Allen wrench you can access the set screw down again through the top of the pump in that hole there and at the same time I usually take a straight edge go across the front of the pump head like so and if for some reason these rollers are touching the straight edge 
then you want to push push these back slightly and then tighten down your set screw and once that's done you should be able to spin spin that freely like this if you have any kind of drag where it's, it's rubbing on the back or vice versa when you close this and you turn it on if it's rubbing on the on the red safety shield you know that this has to be readjusted so that it's centered inside the pump head okay in mentioning the uh, roller carrier uh, being able to take that on and off uh, it is often sometimes uh, the case where after the set screw has been put down inside the keyway on the motor shaft sometimes you can't always pull pull that off easily by hand when that does happen uh, it's a good idea to use a gear puller which can thread right into the other the other two uh, tapped holes here and then there will be a center piece that goes right down the motor shaft and when you begin to tighten that it will just pull that pull that whole unit right out of there and that will save you a lot of trouble 